So we've just received in the Razer Black Widow V3 Mini Hyperspeed. Now this is quite a special little keyboard. It's a 65% mechanical keyboard that's incredibly compact and wireless, making it great for moving on the go, maybe for your laptop or your LAN rig. So we're gonna unbox it, take a look around it, then we're gonna plug it in, look at the lighting and its features. Okay, so we've got our instruction manual and stickers. We've got the keyboard itself, wrapped in cellophane, we'll put that to the side for one second, see what else we've got. And then we've got a nice braided cable to either run it wide if you do want to, or to actually just charge the actual keyboard itself. So you've got a USB-A to USB-C, the USB-C is the actual keyboard side. Right, let's open it up. So there we go, so like a full height mechanical. So as you can see, it's pretty much a standard height with the usual sort of two feet flip up position to make it the typing slightly more comfortable. Or you can just like flatten the desk for the rubber feet. I've gone for the linear silent switches, but they do also come in a clicky if you prefer it for maybe for typing. But for gaming, I think this is the best option. Looking around the keyboard itself, on the top of the keyboard, we've got a switch which either puts it to Bluetooth mode or 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Now, if you're using Bluetooth mode, it's fine for actual typing, but I wouldn't want a game because of the extra latency that is involved with Bluetooth. But if you're on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless, it's just like your wireless mouse, perfect for gaming. And if you're in the off position and you've got it plugged in, you can just use it hardwired like a standard keyboard. Now on the bottom itself, we've got a little trap door. And if we open that trapdoor up, we've got the little USB 2.4 gigahertz dongle so we can run it wirelessly. So okay, so we're gonna plug this in, install Synapse, we're gonna take a look at the lighting and then see how it performs. Okay, so we've installed Synapse, we're up and running. I've currently got a fair few items within my Synapse and we're all set to the fire synchronized lighting effects, which does look very good. Now, before we look at Synapse, just wanna quickly talk about the keyboard. Bear in mind that this is a 65%, so we don't have a function key, and we do have some keys missing. So we've got a function key here. And as I hold down the function key, you'll notice all the keys that have a secondary function light up white. So the one through to the plus are the F1 to F12, and then you've got your media keys down here, your brightness, macros, print screen, all the things that you'd normally get on a full-size keyboard. So it's great that when you hold down the function, it makes you aware of which keys are which. So let's go through to the Synapse. Now, as you can see, because I have a lot of Razer devices in my Synapse, they're all showing up here. So here is my Razer Black Widow V3 Mini, and you can see I've only got 21% of battery left. I've used it for quite a while already. Now, Razer claims it's up to 200 hours of battery life. I haven't been able to fully test that, but I would imagine that's with the backlighting off and probably on Bluetooth. If you're with the backlighting and hyperspeed, you're probably talking to 50 to 100 hours. It's lasted me for ages so far, but I haven't actually timed it. Now, the first page that we can see here shows you all of our keys on the keyboard. And from within this area, we can click a key and we can rebind it or customize it. So you can have it uh, set up so different macros, uh, different functions. And that can be really handy, especially on a small keyboard where you don't have full access to all the keys like you would on a full-size keyboard with number pad. You'll also notice at the bottom, we've got gaming mode, it's currently off. If I switch that to on, you can have it always on or within a game. And from within here, you can get to disable the Windows key, disable Alt Tab if you want, and disable Alt F4. Uh, very handy if you're in game, you don't want to accidentally tab yourself out with uh, Windows or Alt Tab, but uh, probably enable it in game is the easiest way. I switch that back off. We've also got the Hyperspeed Multi-Device Pairing Utility. And from within here, you can pair more than one device, the Hyperspeed dongle that plugs into your PC or laptop. Now, if you've got yourself an Orochi V2 or a Death Adder Hyperspeed or some of the other Hyperspeed mice, you can connect them all together on one dongle rather than having lots of dongles sticking out the back of your PC. Moving across to the lighting tab, you'll see straight away we're on 100% brightness. It is pretty nicely lit. Uh, I am in quite a bright studio environment. That You can adjust the brightness in here and it will automatically adjust on the fly to the keyboard or you can do the function and the G and H key. We'll also adjust the brightness as well without the need of synapse. Another thing that's quite handy is you can tell it to switch off the lighting when the display turns off. So if your display sort of has a five minute off time, 
and you're not using the PC, will automatically switch the lighting off on the keyboard to save you some battery life. And you can also choose it when it's idle for so many minutes to turn the lighting off. And if we move to the effects tab on the right, you can see we're set to the fire, which is my whole setup is currently set to. There are quite a few different quick effects, uh, such as breathing, and you can breathe between different colors, fire, reactive. So as we click that, the keys light as I press them, which is nice. We've got ripple. And as I press that, the whole keyboard ripples across. Starlight. And again, you can adjust the colors. A static color, it defaults to the green, but you just choose the color picker and choose a color that will match your particular setup. We've got the wave, it's a very pretty sort of effect. I use this on the laptop all the time. And the wheel as well, they all look great. Now these quick effects are very good and they give you a great range straight out of the box, but you can also use the advanced effects. So if you go to the studio tab, you can see all of your devices that you currently have installed in Synapse show up in the studio. And from within here, I can select individual keys or areas of the lighting. Now this does take some time, so you're gonna have to have a real play around with this. But if you've got very specific needs that you wanna display on your Synapse software, it can all be done within here. Now me personally, I do normally just straight away have it in the either the ripple or the wave or one of the other easy quick effects. Just it's nice and easy to set all of my devices just to one and they synchronize. Now if we move over to the power tab, you can see that here that you can get to dim the lighting within so many minutes to save some battery. And you can also get it to turn off the entire keyboard after 50 minutes of inactivity to save battery life. You can turn that off if you don't want it to, but if you're stepping away from your PC for a little while, it's nice that it automatically tries to save some battery. Now, I've got the feet up currently on the keyboard, which brings it up to a nice typing incline. The keys being linear feel absolutely fantastic. If you're typing, you may want to go for the purple switch for the clicky, but if I'm gaming, I like a nice linear, what would be the equivalent of a cherry red switch. It's got a nice bit of feedback. It feels brilliant. So I'm going to quickly fire up a game and we're going to take a quick look at how it responds. Now we're currently connected over the 2.4 gigahertz hyperspeed dongle and it feels as responsive as if you're using a cable, which is one of the main reasons that you'll be buying this keyboard over say the Huntsman Mini TKL or some of the other smaller Razer keyboards. The wireless feature does add to the price, but it does make this keyboard much more versatile, especially if you're traveling with it. Now as Apex loads up, you'll notice that it takes control of the Synapse software. We've all turned red across my entire setup. It's a really nice feature that you have in Synapse with a lot of games and take control of your lighting. As you see now, it's all going different blues and whites. I'm gonna just fire up a quick game of Apex and you can just see how responsive this actual keyboard is. Okay, so here we go. Let's quickly get into the game. Now, as you can see, it is incredibly responsive. You just feel like you're on the cable just like you do with the mice these days. I think, you know, once you've gone to wireless, it's really hard to go back to a cabled keyboard. Another thing that I absolutely love about this setup, being such a compact keyboard, I can have the mouse really close to the keyboard itself and I'm not banging in like you would often do with a large, full-size keyboard. It's just an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Right, so here we go. So despite the poor play, absolutely flawless behavior from the keyboard, it really is fantastic. I think it's definitely one of my favorite sort of compact wireless keyboards that I've actually used for gaming. Now as always, if you've got any questions, put it in the comment section down below. And as usual, thank you for watching.